Hello everyone and welcome. This is part three of an ongoing series that I'm doing about uh, the JET program uh, based on questions that were asked of three former ALTs on the Tofugu.com website, an excellent website. I recommend you go check it out um, if you're interested in Japan and you probably are because you're watching this video, let's face it. Um, so I'm going to be turning over here every now and then. This is me looking at my, my laptop to pick up the questions and uh, give you my insight, etc. We've done nine questions so far, so I'm picking up on number 10. If you haven't watched parts one and parts two, uh, go to the My Argonauts channel and watch those before you watch this one, uh, so you know where we're coming from. But really quick to recap, we've got Rebecca, who's from Oregon. She taught at elementary schools in Hokkaido. We've got Matt from New York, who was in junior high schools in Kochi. And we've got uh, Tori from Washington State in America, um, who taught high schools in Aomori. So, uh, unfortunately, three Americans, and I'm American, so not a lot of uh, international uh, insight into these questions. But, uh, you know, you do, you do what you can. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number 10. Describe an average class on an average day of JET teaching. Okay. Um, so, Rebecca talks about how they would start with a greeting, uh, review uh, songs like head, shoulders, knees, and toes, uh, teach a question and answer, play a game. Very typical of elementary school. I agree with all of that. Um, you know, obviously... Uh, seasons take a, a big part of what you do at elementary school. They love to do things that are seasonal, meaning it's soon going to be Halloween. So you do something about Halloween, you know, coming up. Uh, it's, then it's going to be Christmas. Uh, it's winter, so you do things about winter. Then you do things about Valentine's Day, or you do things about the New Year, or you do things about uh, not so much St. Patrick's Day. I mean, you know, not every American holiday is important. Um, but you would do, for instance, in February in Japan, you would do um, setsubun, which is uh, oniwasoto, you know, where you throw the, the, the soybeans uh, at the demon and, and wish the good luck into your home. So you do a mixture of your own holidays, perhaps, from your own country, and um, things that are uh, happening in Japan. Um, so... Uh, you know, it's, it's, and it's, that's easy, that's fun, you know, you can think up worksheets and, and things to do if they're higher level kids, um, you know, word searches about Halloween, I, you know, words, etc., etc., teach those words, I mean, all that kind of stuff is real easy and fun to do. Um, all Matt says here is, uh, all my junior high classes were between 30 and 35 kids and each class was 50 minutes long. That's pretty standard too. Um, a lot of times, maybe 45 minutes at some schools or elementary schools, but 45 or 50 minutes. Um, and yeah, most classes are going to be uh, between 30 and 40. Of course, like I've said in the previous videos, if you have really small uh, elementary schools, um, you could have, you know, like I taught the first, second, and third graders like all together at one school and it was like nine kids. Uh, but that was rare. Actually, they used to have me do one and two together, three and four together, and then five and six together um, at the really small school. And then the one tiny school, I literally taught like everybody. <laughs> but sometimes I, they, they had like one sixth grader one year. There was one girl, she was the only sixth grader who was going to then graduate and go on to junior high. And they would have me and the teacher and her, just like the three of us, in a room uh, sometimes for a lesson. Just because they wanted her to, you know, be doing some of the upper level stuff that the kids were at the other elementary schools around. So you just never know. Uh, and high school, uh, Tori says she would start with a warm-up game that teaches them a concept, show them how to use it, practice together, practice on their own or in groups, etc., uh, etc. Et so there's a difference between going into a class where you're trying to maybe teach them some bit of grammar or help them learn some bit of grammar um, and what is often called like OC or OCC, oral communication class, 
where you're just trying to get them to speak and be comfortable using English, etc., etc. Um, so I think OC is mostly second year of high school. Third year of high school, they're just studying for tests. Um, so you probably won't even teach your seniors if you go to a high school, but some, some places you will. Um, and some places maybe they would have like a, this class is really good at English class, you know, whereas this class is all the jocks who play baseball who don't want to worry about English, you know, who knows? Um, so uh, a lot of different types of things. Okay, what kind of tech, technology, was available at the schools where you taught, number 11? Uh, elementary school, she said there was next to nothing tech-wise, uh, Rebecca says, at her elementaries. Um, and that was when she arrived, and this was probably 2007, 2008, I don't know. You know, all these people did like five years, so I'm not sure when they finished and started, uh, or started and finished. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, when I when I went in 2004, man, I mean, there was no Twitter. There was no YouTube. Facebook was a thing, but uh, you had to be a college student to do it. You know, I mean, so much has changed in the, what's that, 12 years since I first began being a Jet. Um, and definitely the schools, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of technology to offer up as in the sense of, you know, like now I use my iPad in class and, you know, I'm hooking up HDMI cables to a projector and, you know, using the screen and doing slides. and um, But all that's come about in the last five or six years. Uh, they now have these things called smart boards, which I think are very popular now in schools in Japan um, that can afford them. Uh, they're basically like electronic whiteboards. Um, you can hook a computer up to them sometimes. Uh, it just basically turns everything into a giant touch screen. Um, so, you know, you might be lucky and get that. Um, I talked about how the fact that I was pretty lucky in my junior high, there was a television in every room at least. So with the old school, like red and uh, blue and yellow, you know, the three colored cables, I could hook like my iPod uh, into the TV at first, that was the only thing I had, and like play music or show pictures. Um, and then, uh, you know, eventually, I've always had Mac products. Um, you can hook up, you know, things to the television, and that helps you, uh, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, now being able at my new school, you know, the, the projector is in the ceiling of every classroom that I go into. And I just hook up through a wire, and it, it comes out on like, you know, we wheel the whiteboard in front of the green chalkboard and use that as the screen at my school. And it probably comes out about a little bit bigger than like a uh, large tel television, maybe like four feet by four feet, you know, uh, square. And you can show stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, and most uh, laptops now are equipped to do that very easily, you know, mirror what's on your your desktop onto the the projector um, but yeah when, when when she when they started and when I started it was it was much more primitive now I would say most places are, are getting caught up um, we have a computer lab at school but to be honest I never used it <laughs> uh, so I've been at school now almost six months um, it's in a different building so you'd have to like leave walk over there blah blah, blah. you literally at my school you have to go outside um, which means putting on shoes, going to the new place, putting on, taking off shoes, putting on slippers. Um, and it's uh, it's just often booked. I, I know I, I like one time I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try to use this so they can all sit in front of a computer. Um, but it was booked. Like we share it with the elementary school that is attached to our uh, school. So... You might have that, you know, you might have a classroom full of computers. Um, I never used it much, though, when I was teaching. We actually did have one uh, back at Taisha Junior High where I taught, uh, but I never really used it that much. Um, now, at my school, my school's a private school, so we can require a bit more of the students. We require them to buy an iPad that they bring to class every day. And in high school, they have to bring a laptop or a notebook computer of some kind to class every day. So uh, 
that's available to you. You can say, okay, everybody, you know, like a, a popular program is Quizlet. I don't know if you've heard of it, Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T. Um, it's really easy to use. It's free. Um, well, I think it's free, although I use the, the school's password, so maybe somebody paid something. I don't know. But it's an app as well, of course, and the, the app is free. Um, anyway, and it, it's just a really good like flashcard app. So I'm, I'm having my kids learn 20 new vocabulary words every week, and they take a test every Monday. And so every Tuesday or Wednesday, I put the new list of 20 words into Quizlet. And then on, like, on Thursday class, I'll go, okay, take out your iPads, let's do Quizlet. And we'll go over the words together, we'll make sentences, and then they can play little games with them like scatter or matching and stuff like that. And they can use that to study the list. Um, so yeah, it, it is changing, and tech is uh, definitely a bigger part now than it was uh, when I was a Jet. Um, let's see. So Tori said, I basically had nothing. Um, we did end up with mini iPads during my last year of Jet, which I utilized a couple of times for pair learning. So, like I said, you know, it's it's. I think if you were a Jet and you're going to come in 2017 and start being a Jet, it's going to be so different than when I was a Jet in 2004 and starting. And I was teaching, I would, you know, Japan is always like this incredibly, uh, how do you say, futuristic society or modern society that is in, in effect really 20 years behind uh, the West in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, I, you know, fax machines are still a big part of Japan. Um, I can't, you know, they don't, they don't utilize email and stuff as efficiently here in businesses and like at schools and stuff uh, as they do in the West. Um, there's some, like, you know, hesitancy toward technology here, in a way, that you would be surprised, because you don't think of Japan that way, but it's true, and, um, I would, you know, I, I was the only person with an apple when I first started at school, I told this story many times, so I won't bore you with it again, but, um, yeah, I mean, everybody just, you know, followed, you know, here's this, here's the school laptop that you're given, and, uh, you know, it's a Lenovo or it's a whatever, a Dell or no, probably not a Dell, Sony, Vio or whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I would, I was teaching a lot of my coworkers like, okay, this is the website Google. You go there and look at what you can look up and see then if you click on images, look at all these pictures, you, you know, cause they would look at my worksheet sometime and go, Jason, where did you get like all these little pictures of things that you put on the margins of your worksheet or, you know, how did you make this, this slide or blah, blah, blah. And I was teaching a lot of them how to use and, you know, PowerPoint and stuff. Now, hopefully that's changed and, you know, teachers that are younger that are coming up now are better. Um, but of course, you know, you're going to run into teachers who've been teaching for 20 or 30 years. I still have a social studies teacher. I was just joking with him the other day. Because he goes and he carries this massive, long, rolled-up map of, like, Asia with Japan on it, or Japan, just Japan. I think he has, like, three of them. He's a social studies teacher, and he carries it up one or two flights of stairs and hangs it in the classroom. And it's big, you know. It's probably, like, you know, seven feet by seven feet, you know. It's a big thing. And, uh, and shows, the, you know, points at it with this pointer on this map. And I'm like, we could take pictures of it like a big picture of the whole thing and then little pictures of the sections and you could put it on your computer and then put that on a screen. You know, and I'm trying to explain to him, not interested. He just, you know, he's going to tote that thing around, you know. And so the students do, you know, they get, they're taught with modern methods sometimes and some of their teachers teach them very antiquated ways. Uh, so who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it also depends on how new the school is. If it's a new school, um, it'll probably have movable chalkboards and yeah, all kinds of tech. Because when they rebuilt the elementary school in my town, it was amazing, you know, all the stuff they had. And, uh, but if it's an old school that's been there a while, and my school has, I think it's, the building's got to be at least 25 years old, um, if not older. Uh, yeah, it can be old and, you know, anything they do now, you have to try to install it. Like, 
I mean, we try to have Wi-Fi in the school, and it's really spotty right now. We're trying to improve it so the kids can get Wi-Fi when they're using their iPads. And you know, all right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wow, I'm only going to get to like three. I'm so slow at this. I'm sorry. Um, what is it like to teach students at elementary school, junior high school, high school? Question number twelve. Um, elementary school, the students know less English. So lessons need more gestures, visuals, translations, but kids are way more excited about English because they aren't studying for a test, so you have more freedom with your lesson topics. All of that from Rebecca I agree with. Um, the kids at elementary school just, they, first of all, you're a visitor. You're this, you know, in my case, this big gaijin that's coming into their school and, and hopefully being ganky, you know, and... Uh, and so they just, I mean, you know, it's, it's happy playtime. You know, English is happy playtime, especially with the lower grades. Now, now that the fifth and sixth graders have a book and they're starting to, you know, it's like a little bit more serious, um, maybe it's changed a little bit. Uh, but I still, you know, they're not going to be tested heavy on it or whatever, you know. So they're still having fun with it. Um, it's still this strange, crazy person coming in and, and teaching them, and, and for the most part, they love it. Um, some of them really, you know, want to do well, etc., and, uh, you know, do try, like you can tell, they're, like, trying to, like, remember and learn what you say. Um, they'll get upset if they can't remember a word at the chalkboard in a game or something. I mean, you know, you have to deal with everything you have to deal with at elementary, you know, kids crying if they lose, you know, things like that. You can't just give stickers to the winner, you know, you have to give a sticker to everyone, you know, all these kinds of things. So, um, but yeah, I mean, elementary school kids are great for me in small doses. Like, I like doing it three or four times a week at most. Um, uh, maybe not even that much. I, I try to maybe, yeah, maybe go two or three times a week to elementary schools and, you know, do this school this week and this school the next week and blah, blah, blah. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to be always at elementary school. I liked having the older kids at junior high um, to talk to a little bit differently, and their clubs were much more interesting. You know, to go watch them play sports or them do a brass band concert was, you could be fun. Whereas in elementary, uh, you know, I mean, you know, it's squawking instruments and, you know, kids falling over each other on the soccer field, etc. Uh, junior high. He said the toughest thing is to getting kids interested in a rural prefecture. Um, they don't see any reason for learning English for their future. Um, English was more fun when they were in elementary, and that's true. You can lose a kid in seventh grade really easily. Um, if they have the wrong teacher, especially, not you, but the, the Japanese teacher, um, it can really sour them on English, and that's unfortunate. And if you get behind in a language, unfortunately, it's really hard to catch up. You have to really then want to learn. And if the kid, you know, is already borderline and then gets behind, they're never going to catch up, and they're always going to hate English because they're always going to be poor at it. Um, and so seventh grade is a really crucial year. I wish more schools focused on that and assigned their best teacher, their best young Genki teacher to that grade, um, even though it's very simple English that the kids are learning at that level, still, um, it, it, it's important that they come in and are transitioned into taking tests in it and expecting to actually remember and learn what they're doing, checking their, their penmanship when they write things so they're not just complete chicken scratch the rest of their life etc. Um, and it doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes they get the old, you know, 55-year-old teacher that, you know, is gra grammar translation on the chalkboard, no fun, no games, no nothing. And, uh, you know, they tune out. You know, they just, they just don't care. Um, and that's sad. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's not up to you. Um, all you can do is do your best if you're asked to go. And sometimes JTEs don't have, they don't have to ask you to go. I had a JTE that never asked me to go, literally never, almost in my entire five years. She was at my school, four of the five I was there, and I probably went to her school, I went to her class, I could count them on one hand. And um, she just had no time for, for me, but no time for basically ALTs, um, from what I learned, you know, talking uh, to other people about her over the years. Um, she, saw some, she saw no need for us. And, uh, and that's allowed, 
you know? Um, you know, and if they're forced to do it, if you make a stink and you're like, I never get invited to this class, and then they have to, like, ask you because they've been told by the vice principal, you know, is that the situation you want? Mm, so it's, it's hard. Um, junior high kids, learning was much more structured around the textbook. You know, it's not a very great textbook. Um, learning on an individual level, you try to think of things that they're interested in, sports or music, fashion, movies, video games, uh, maybe tie into things so that they'll perk up and think, what's this Super Mario game you want to play in class today or something, you know? Wait, you want to do a Harry Potter game? What does Harry... I like Harry Potter. What is this about? You know, so... Um, yeah, you know, uh, you'll be a human tape recorder sometimes, other times you'll run the lesson, other times like the first 10 minutes is you, and then the next half hour is the teacher, and then you just sort of hang out. It's so different for so many different teachers and situations. Uh, high school, she says, teaching Japanese high school students was awesome. Um, and she said it was like teaching kids in America, but just with a language barrier, um, they care a lot about looking stupid or being wrong, so they don't take a lot of risks in their writing or speaking, and that's true. It's very hard to get kids in Japan. It's very unusual for Westerners, you know, to raise their hand. Um, you have to basically call on them most of the time, uh, and they just, yeah, they, they don't want to risk, you know, being wrong. Um, they'll turn around on the simplest question and, like, consult with their the person in the desk behind them, their friend or whatever, is this what you do? How do you say this? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, you know, it's it's like, how's the weather today? You know, and they turn around and they're like, you know, asking them, oh, what do I say, what do I say? You know, and they know what to say. They just, you know, it's just, it's, it's frustrating at times, but uh, that's the culture that you've been brought in to help. Uh, so there you go. Okay, this is already over 20 minutes. It should still upload, hopefully. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I will try to put up a, the other two of these, probably, uh, to finish 13 to 23. If I can do five in each video, I'll be, I'll, I'll try to be more on point, um, uh, this week. Uh, and I still am going to make the anniversary video sometime soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, thank you for everybody that left a comment on the parking lot challenge. That was a fun video. Uh, so a lot of you had the uh, right idea there. And, uh, yeah, part four is coming up soon, so check back. Okay, peace. Take care, guys.